Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. We've got Graham here. Hello. How you doing, buddy? Feeling a lot better today. A lot better today after a dark week. Another dark week. Let's not go into that. I, I know you you say that, but me watching you, you're hiding it well or handling mm. it very, very well. Well, I was asleep all day yesterday, pretty much. The majority of it all night. You yeah. were in the night. <laughs> you were in the night. I used to sleep through Edward's scissor mouth. And he seems to have... There's an ambulance over there now. He seems to have had a heart attack or something. Someone beat him up. I don't know. It wasn't me. It wasn't he's, me. He's gone quiet at last, so... Oh, I know. I can't imagine the complaints the marina on Monday morning tomorrow. There's no there. ambulance over there, but I was just no, joking. Joke. Okay. That's a joke. So I'd clear that up. But no, seriously, to, uh, getting back to you... you you um you have done remarkably well. Really, I'm, you've got to admit that this. I'm on the Guinness this evening. I don't know if you can see that with that light there. You saw that light's not like being a bit bright. What like God's joy for a chat. Knock it off and I'll put this light on. See if that's better. Oh no. How's that? How's that? Oh no, I think that's worse. Turn the other one off. We look better in the dark. Doesn't Do everybody? We? Do we look We've got Steph's. Steph's, Comments below. We have Steph's lovely uh, we have, we have. candle here in the wooden heart. That's great. Very romantic, this, isn't it? It is, it is. But Steph did say, you know, don't burn it for more than an hour because it's made of wood and it all gets hot and it could be a fire hazard. Fire hazard. So we must for not forget to blow it out. But thank you very much, Steph. Hey, okay. I think it's amazing. It smells wonderful. It really does. It really does. But yeah, I see what you put. I see, get your point. Hello, Paul. Here comes the cat. Hello. So what have you been up to today? What's the what's the um mostly sleeping. <laughs> trying to sleep through that. I was giant. watching a I was watching a movie and I just I nodded I don't know if you noticed, I'd already started the evening and then I just nodded off. Was like, it Candice Renoir? No, it was not. Oh I can't stand that. That's deliberate revenge for Brexit, it really is. The the Paramount down here. They used to put all UK imports and American imports and now it's all French and German and and there's even some Bulgarian, I've nothing against that, but they're prime time. I mean, really, are a lot of, and it, I apart mean, from anything... I there must be French people down here, but you don't see them very often. I have watched Candice Renoir. I'm, I'm not very good at French, but I can understand French. And it's just not a really good show. Full no. stop. She's a bit of a, an over-actor and a bit strange. I see. Uh, no, no, I haven't. What have I been doing today? You've been writing with your quill. Oh yes, yes, my my quill. You can see that I'll put it against my skin. The quill. This is an actual ink quill with the little little quink pot, and I thought it would be really messy and really difficult. But actually, the technology of it, it's really good. I have written my letter to Prince William. There are six pages in total, and. Um, I'm not giving the game away on it just yet, but uh, there are things in the making, in the background, as we speak. And you're talking to, what's her name? Blair, yes, absolutely. And potentially other people as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I actually emailed um, Carl Larson today to ask him if he would come on live with me. Why did you do that? Because I watched the interview on Dan Wooden and Popcorn Planet and although I understand the emotion, there were lots of things I would like to ask him and give him the chance to answer. And I couldn't hear an I, awful lot of what he was saying. In fact, yeah. there was very little point in him even... I did try to listen there. to it this morning when you had it on down here. And um, Larson was on the Popcorn Planet channel and there was quite a few other YouTubers. And Samantha Markle was on it. Yeah, yeah. And nobody would let him speak. They all just shouted all over him and I thought... Why are you doing that, guys? Why aren't you letting the guy speak? I think for Samantha it's very emotional. She's highly defensive, naturally, of her father. I think for the uh, YouTubers, Andy and Steph, they are, they're hurting and they're very fresh about the allegations of, of them going near Harry and Meghan's house and the hypocrisy. I think that, that they're very yeah. angry about that. Yeah. Paula, of course, is very defensive of Samantha because she's her friend. There was a lot of emotion. And um, I'm not emotional about Carl Larson. And I'd like to give him the space to just talk and talk and talk and talk. And there are certain things I would like to ask him that I think 
and also doing it on a live I think a lot of these guys have got questions and I would really take my time and make sure everybody got the chance to ask him politely certain points is this the case is this the case to sort of pin it down yeah I mean, I mean you've got to be polite to people because <laughs> if someone goes on your channel and then you just start slagging them off and not letting them speak I just go I'm going goodbye Boom. but it, but if it's someone who's upset you or they've been involved with people for example Jack Royston and Newsweek who has been a snake in the past let's not to put too fine a point on it and I've invited him for a live in the, the past cat. um then people are going to be uh, a lot more animated and then, and then I do it myself if I'm really into something I do tend to interrupt talk over and then I could kick myself afterwards but if I had him on a live I would make notes rather than interrupting him I, I would make notes and think right he's just said that I want to come back to that so has he got an email or something he has he has several websites of course the royal tour being one of them which the thing is, I don't think anybody in this community would, even if they lived locally, I don't think they would, even if the tour was $60, I don't think they'd pay it. I mean, why would you? To go and see restaurants you could go and visit yourself. Why Why do it? I mean, wh how much do we charge at Dolphin Safari? Maybe he's just doing it for publicity. You know, hey, I'm Meghan Markle's friend and I'm Thomas Markle's friend and I'm doing tours for six grand a time, a pop. It's, yeah, it's twelve hundred dollars. So twelve hundred for five people was. Royal Griff yeah, did a very good breakdown grand, on it, grand. but basically she was saying that it could um, just be for publicity. Maybe no one will take him up on it. Yes, it could be to build for Harry's um, security case. Because uh, I see Omid was making a point about his security. Oh, that's right. He was picking on Patrick Christie. He's going on about GB News. Mm. There's a lot of critics of GB News. GB News, of course, is largely right wing, not always, but it's a very opinion piece type news where they allow each presenter to have their style. And why yeah. not? Why yeah. not? Who are these dictators who say they're not allowed? That No, no, no. Silence. Silence. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, I think it would be interesting to talk to Carl and that's if he... Uh, uh, He's not going to answer me, is he? I he seriously might. doubt it. I doubt he it. Might. But if he does, you guys will be the first to know. I promise you. Because I, I think it's important and I think I'm removed enough from that. You know, if it was something about you or Wally or Trevor, I'd be, and, or Sue, Blair, I'd be a mm. lot more emotional, a lot more invested. Um, but because I, I, can, I can appreciate, but I can take a step back, I think I might be able yeah, to. Yeah, well, you know. It, People have said they claim he's in with Meghan Markle and he's yeah. in with his best friends with Thomas and Samantha was saying, no, you're not. Yeah. I'm giving it all this. So, I mean, yeah. is he actually in with, with Meghan Markle? Uh, or is that... I seriously doubt he is. Just but a figment of his imagination and he's managed to get a few shots of them as a pap. I don't know. I don't know, but I, I would be I very know. interested in hearing his version of events and getting it on the record. But, I mean, he's not doing anything legal, is he? Going around with a camera claiming he knows everyone and taking pap shots and the write-up was that was extreme who the hell wrote that did he write that world famous photographer uh, the only person qualified uh, best friends with thomas markle uh, 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 like a um, a corridor well, between both um he's, he's born and himself Trump. he's born himself up isn't he yeah. to make a few quid that's obviously what he's what his angle is but who it? would pay for example how much do we charge at the dolphin safari for let's say six adults to go out and, and see the dolphins goldfin is a phenomenally expensive boat she's worth a quarter of a million pounds it's 25 quid each normally isn't it or 30 30 quid, no? 30, 30 each so i mean yeah. it, it, in and it's not really the sort of thing where people could swim out into the bay or take a canoe out yeah. into the bay whereas what he's offering is well i'll show you a restaurant well people know the well, names well, of them they well, could go there themselves would you pay one thousand two hundred dollars <laughs> unless you're doing it with Megan's best friend. And oh Thomas God, Marcus Graham! I won't friend. even buy a new kettle. You are talking to the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but he's Megan's best friend. I don't Tim care. They, they, they go round for cocktails every night. They, they I don't care. This guy round in his car, giving twelve hundred dollars. I don't care. I would not pay twelve hundred dollars if she were alive to meet Princess Diana. My boss did once. My boss paid five thousand pounds to sit at a table, not even the table next to Diana, 
but the one there was one between him and Diana and he actually said to me he had to pay five thousand pounds for him and five grand per person at the table. It was a ten seater table, my God, Mr. Ouch. Roth Mr. Roth. And he said, I can die happy now. I breathe the same air as Princess Diana and I remember thinking you must be insane. Well that is and pure, it all that's all, pure insanity, but I mean she, <laughs> she was a proper royal, wasn't she? Oh she was yes. Like like <laughs> Her Majesty. Like, you know, King Charles, but I mean, I wouldn't pay 1200 to to sit near King I, Charles. I, I just, but well, I haven't got the money to do it. If I got a free invite to sit in the same room as Meghan Markle, I wouldn't even go. No, Honestly, would I, I wouldn't go. I'm not, not interested, not yeah. at all. No. I'm just not. I would have gone. If someone said, you can come and sit in this room where, where Diana's going to be, and she'll be a few tables away and it's free. I'd probably go, I'd think, oh yeah, I'd like to see, because she's the only royal I ever wanted to see, really. Yeah. And uh, I probably would have gone, but I wouldn't have paid for it. Well, my boss, the tickets he paid were for charity, and it wasn't like... Oh, a, right, right. It, so, that was yeah. the deal. Diana would go to events and, and maybe give a speech or pull a curtain or something. I think it was... Um, no, they, they were still married, because I worked for Mr Roth until 1992. 91, 92. Um, and he just loved the royals. Yeah, he but Diana them. wasn't up her own bottom, was she? No. She wasn't like rubbing it in all the time. I thought everyone had a Range Rover. Where's yours? Then they well, come free. As I was saying to you earlier, there's yeah. a massive difference between Diana and William and Harry. Yeah. Because Diana was not a natural born royal. royal yeah. She was an aristocrat. Yeah, but she grew up virtually normal, didn't she? Yeah. Mm. Virtually. No, Graham, no, I know that world. No, she was an she was an Earl's daughter. She was born on Sandringham Estate. It no. No, she wasn't um but she she was down to earth like us. But Harry is a natural born yeah, and could, so he I think she that's could go in shops and buy things and use a public lavatory, couldn't she? Yeah. But so does Catherine. So does William. Yeah, well Catherine Catherine probably did. No, no, she still does. She took Charlotte into a pub toilet because Charlotte was caught short. And she goes shopping for books and stuff. What? And all, yeah, all the time. All the time. And William shops in and... Need I own Mosham. William is always popping up and doing things like that. I think you'd be surprised. But whereas the point I'm making is Harry, um, because he was born into it, I think, and they've overindulged him. He's got this arrogance. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I was get last night I was talking about stories at the Dolphin Safari. Who cares about Meghan and Harry? God's sake. Um, what is your most the one thing at Dolphin Safari that stands out for you? Which which trip? Oh, the wave. Oh my God! I had forgotten about that. The wave. And it was a flat oh sea. God, yes. It was a completely flat sea. Oh yeah. And we went out with this big family. Was it a private charter? No, no, it was. But there was a there was a big family. They were and they, they, they were um, um, Iranians or something like that. Weren't not they? Iranian. They oh I can't remember. They were like royalty. It was a dude, a load of his wives and kids. But they were definitely Arab. Wasn't types. private because there were only yeah. um, eleven of them, and it was you and Yossi for crew. And, and I you. was just about to go home, and a couple of girls came along, and it tipped over the thirteenth. Right, so I right, had to go right. on the trip for the thirteenth passenger. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Anyway, yes. the sea was flat. It was a beautiful sunny day and we <laughs> thought, right, let's go. Let's go early, find the dolphins. Early evening. We just finished it. And uh, it? we set off. We went out into the bay. And um, all of a sudden, we're, we're looking and I think it was you spotted them. No, the, no, I spotted the wave. There was a wave. And uh, it's one of the bow waves, these, these ferries, high-speed ferries just thunder along, creates a big wave mm. behind them. And the dolphins are quite often surfing on these waves. So we looked through the binoculars and we thought, oh yeah, dolphins on the waves. Oh, there I, don't we go. Think, I don't think we even had to look through binoculars. We hadn't. There we go. Look, we don't. Do and so we announced it. We said, look, look, watch that wave up ahead. Look, we're going to go towards the wave. There's all dolphins jumping on it. So they all got their camcorders out and they're all standing there looking at the wave. And as we're getting nearer and nearer to the wave, Fiona says, oh, I don't like the look of this wave. It looks a bit bigger than normal, and I thought, no, oh, I'll be fine because we, we we come across waves all the time. You know, it's not uncommon. And uh, anyway, this this wave was particularly sharp and high, 
And to cut a long story short, the boat was pretty much at a standstill by the time we got to it. We could have gone backwards, I suppose, but we didn't on this occasion. And the boat just punched a hole in the wave. It was just literally a wall of water higher than the passengers, and mm. it just went boom right through this wave. And everybody was just soaked to the skin. Oh, it was horrific. Everybody. And it was horrific. All, the, all the cameras, camcorders, they all died. And everyone was screaming, all cold and wet. And uh, I thought, where on earth did that wave come from? Because the sea was flat, absolutely flat. There was no waves, was there that day? Well, I don't want to defame anybody, but never TT the second. It's obvious to we check the AIS. It was a particularly nasty boat. Oh, I hated that, that boat. Hated at the it. Time. But I think that was the worst. I mean, because you had visions of people being flushed off the sides of the boat. And that's, well, that's yeah. the last thing you want. As a, as a they, they were they were frightened and um, yeah. all the children were soaked. Everybody was absolutely soaked the to bow, the bone. The bow was about that deep in water. So in the water. And yeah, uh, yeah. I went downstairs and I just all I could think was to get them to sit down in the water on the floor, and hug them, uh, uh, just to stop them screaming. And and then we of course we had to count yeah. them. To be sure, nobody had. Been, it was horrific. And it was they, absolutely. They'd horrific. all had enough. They didn't see any dolphins. Well, and we uh, did. You said, look. We were all saying, look, they're only just there, and they went, don't care, won't go back. And then, interestingly enough, when the yellow boats came back, and they're considerably higher than us, their passengers were drenched, and they had their heads down, very sheepish, and went to the office, don't want to talk about it, and they were way out in the strait. Nefertiti the second, I. I hated that boat. I wanted it condemned, and I think that there were so many complaints yeah, about yeah. her bow wave. It was just speeding. She near killed boat. so was, many people yeah. that, that they just. It was registered her. in Aqaba, which is <laughs> wasn't that where Lawrence of Arabia went or something like that. They know? banished her back to the Red Sea. She's still yeah. there to this day, parting us, as far as I know. And one of our previous captains, Mario, <laughs> I, uh, I mentioned Queen Nefertiti to him, and he, he he looked at me horrified, and he goes, "Never." Never mention that ship yeah. to me again. Never. Yeah. Well, I still have nightmares about that ship. Yeah. When when I was on the, the boat with him, I'd go up and say, Nefertiti's coming out of Algeciras right now. And he'd go, my God, no. And I would, was never joking. He'd say, you're joking. I said, I'm not joking. I've, I've seen her come down the other side of the wall. She's going to turn and come out any minute. And she'd come out and clap it. 30 knots. Didn't care. Kill everybody on board. Parting of the sea. Crabs on the seabed going, Arr! what the fuck? I mean, it is basically the speed at which the captain drives. My least favourite at the moment is Abbe Mardos, as you know. And Benji went out We're drinking. He went on the piss in La Linea and he met the captain and he said, my mum hates your boat. And he, he, he's uh, Romanian or something. And he said, don't care, little boat, get in my way, little boat, die. And I've often wanted to put an official complaint into the captain of Algeciras, the speed at which some of the young captains... Mm. Come out with those ferries, uh, but yes, that was actually really bad. But you go speeding <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a small yeah. bay like that, and you're going to swamp it, little boats. You it's, are. Imagine a jet ski that's a seventy foot ferry, long, a car ferry, and it can yeah. do thirty knots, and it's at, it's creating a wake like the a jet wave, ski. The waves would be bigger than this boat coming I, off the I back think, of it. in all fairness, the wave on that occasion, what of what we could see was about 12 foot high. Well, I would estimate it was about that deep, maybe may about half a metre deep. It, it was beautiful, yeah. like a, a gem, and the sun was setting, and we could see the sun through it. We could see dolphins in it. It was like pure maths doing this thing. It was obvious it was a fairy lake. Um, but when we got else. near it, there was a 12 foot hole. So it's like a 24. You've got to go down the trough before you go through the wave. Well, and I don't, then I don't just... think Goldfin did. She went straight through and we could actually hear her propellers when they hit air <laughs> before the punch. It was it was that bad. I mean, I would have liked to have gotten hold of that captain and slapped him for that. Yeah, I really would. Yeah. Or I mean, it, it. it didn't get to us on the roof, but it got to everybody that was downstairs. <laughs> the last thing I remember, Yossi, because Yossi didn't speak very much English. He was Portuguese. And I said to Graham, I don't like the look of this wave. I mean, there was nothing you could have done. Nothing, except what you did. But the last thing I remember was Yossi going, da 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 And I went, shut the fuck up and get downstairs. Be with the people. And he went, no, Graham says it's all right. Graham says, I said, I don't think so. I don't think this is going to be all right. With you. 
Uh, when we got to it, it was bigger than we thought it was, that's for sure. And we have authorities and we have files and have procedures and protocols. And trust me, once you're at sea, those procedures and protocols, they're worth shit. They're worth shit. Something's going to happen at sea. You've got to be switched on and you've got to react and you've got to deal with it there and then. Yeah. That's all you can do. All the procedures and protocols, they're legal ass covering for later on, aren't they? Where everybody's got hindsight and they go, well, we should have done this. And you should have stood and saluted and you should have got out the file. And, and I always think, I'd love to have you on board and have a crisis. I'd actually enjoy that. See how you cope with your procedures and protocols, your tit. Second worst trip. Or most memorable. Most memorable. There's so many. Um, I can't think of any that spring to mind. Um, I did a trip with Carl Wright. I put one on today. Which was dated back to 2011 when we had the first superpod and Carl Wright was captain. Oh, I saw that. Loads of dolphins charging long out in the straight. Mm. That, was, that was a good trip, remember that? Remember Carl, was, that? Carl was a character. I mean, he, he would take the boat into ferocious water. He was defending his record of finding dolphins and I'm not sure the people always thanked him for it. I remember going out on a trip with him and uh, Goldfin has two life rings on the front, just below, upstairs, but just below where the driver is. And we hit a wave so bad, you know, she was going bang, bang, that both life rings launched into the air. Me and Carl were looking through them like a pair of portholes and then went down and hit the deck. Luckily there was nobody there because they were so wet they'd all gone to the back of the boat. There's no point in and going I, out when it's like that. I said to him, my God, I was seven pounds an hour, yeah. Carl. What the hell am I doing here? We're all going to die. And he went, dolphins. And went, he was good at finding them. But people don't want They don't want that. You know, I... I Never mind the people, I don't. It's I just go around the bay. <laughs> if it's too rough in the straits, I think, nah. I just go around the bay again and around the bay again. If you don't find dolphins, you don't find them. But it, there's no point in pushing your way out into the rough seas, you know. So we're limited to one and a half metres anyway. Yeah. And one and a half metres is not comfortable. And it no. can easily go to two metres when you're there. That's the thing, you can't go out on the sea with a tape measure. You just measure that <laughs> wave. Oh, that wave is illegal. Wave. That was bigger. You've got I mean, to guesstimate what, yeah. what the wave height is. And you think, if it starts to get rough and slapping, you think, nah, I'm going back in the, in the bay. Yeah. Whereas another captain might say, no, it's fine, it's only one and a half metres. And you think, well, I think it's more like two, you know, but... Just got to make a decision, haven't you? You do, yeah. And I mean, the people are the are the wild card as well because they're all different people, and and that's the job of the crew is to suss out: is anybody nervous? Yeah. Anybody has expressed fears that they had a couple of drinks? Have we got any jokers on board? And and it's very much you've got to yeah. you're sort of working with the people like as a team. Yeah. Hey, kitty. Most of the time, you know, it's great. If you, if you have a trip where you don't find dolphins, people might be a bit pissed off, you know, ooh, expensive boat trip, you know, that sort of thing, but I love, there's nothing you can do, it's wild animals, I love what you it? captains do, all of you. What? All of you do the same thing in go, March go and Chill April. them people out. Yeah, he, 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 the water, like buckets of water being lashed all over everybody, no dolphins, and he goes, go and check on the people. And uh, look, we're all right. No, we're freezing cold. We're, we're going. Feel sick. We're going around talking to the people, <laughs> soothing their nerves and reassuring them how the strategy is going to work, and talking on the speaker. And right now we're going to do this. There's no dolphins. We're going to go somewhere else. And as soon as one of the spotters finds a dolphin, every captain, without exception, give me the mic. We've got dolphins. And I always think, bloody hell, where were you when we needed you? When there were no sodding dolphins, and you're no exception. You do the same. Well, Tim doesn't do it because he doesn't speak. Doesn't speak very much. <laughs> oh, but all the other captains. No, she's very good at the spotting same. dolphins. She is very good. Sure. Short, short range. Only short range. Yeah, yeah. I don't do long range like you and Tim. With the they, they have binoculars. Tim's binoculars cost two thousand pounds. They're quite expensive. Um, yeah. and there's a button stabilizer, and I can't use them. I just can't. You can see three to four miles on a reasonably rough sea, but if it gets too rough, you can only do short range or not at all. 
Well, there's only so much movement that the image stabilizers yeah. are taking, and then after that, you just can't see anything anyway. So. But there's only you and Tim that use the image stabilizers. Well, the image stabilizers don't work on the pair that I've got. Put it this way, we're lucky if the crew pick up a pair of binoculars at the best of times, aren't we? I think I'm the last binocular spotter. I don't think Benji ever picked him up. Faith yeah. never did. I don't think their new crew do. Matthew certainly never did. No. A lot of the time you can spot them with your eyes, but you haven't got the range with your eyes, that's the problem. The problem with the eyes is, whoa, whoa, with my binoculars, I can see a little fin tip about two centimetres high with my binoculars, which I couldn't see with my eyes. Yeah. And you only need that glimpse, you know what I mean, when you're scanning, and you just see something that's not right, and you go back and think, what was that? And as soon as the others realise you're looking in a certain way, everybody's looking in that certain way, or a wave that's going the wrong and way. Once you see something, you yeah. focus and yeah. you can see more. Oh, oh Kitty! Oh, Graham! Oh my God, cat! What? <laughs> oh, she's stuck. She clawed my willy. She's Willie. stuck. She's care. stuck. She's away Graham. from me. She's away from me. She's got her claws stuck in your t-shirt. Well, don't unstuck it, Kitty. Come on. Oh, puss. Oh my God. Thought she was gonna get oh go over that way or something. Oh, don't like, let her scratch my cushions. Not not so soon. They've come up really well, your cushions. I'm really pleased to like them. They are. They look better in the dark as well, don't they? I think he's gone. Says a map. It's it's been really quiet now. We're probably the loudest people in the marina. They keep our voices down in case we disturb anybody. Heaven forbid. Oh, I know. We should get a megaphone. Literally, big megaphone. <laughs> Uno, dos, tres. Well, it's community spirit, isn't it? The marina have these uh, events. Normally, they're lovely. They do like a medieval thing, don't they? And they have a market stall. They and... have some excellent um, venues here. I, I think but that would have been excellent. Come ten just... o'clock at night, you know, it's all zip. But I mean, think of people in the restaurant. And there's there's three restaurants within within here in range of him. <laughs> Six. And well, if, you'd, I... if you'd gone there with your wife for a nice meal and a, and a drink. <laughs> And you've got that idiot. Oh no, that's <laughs> all all night long. So you can't even speak to each other because you can't hear yourself. Oh think. no, no, no! It's ruined the whole evening, wouldn't it? I bet those restaurants were empty, all of them. I've been absolutely. Cause I did the video last night, and then he just carried on and carried on and carried on. So I put the TV on. I was watching one of those crime shows, and I fell asleep. And then I woke up at three. Th I think you woke me up and said it's all right. He's shut up now. Three thirty. Finally, and all the camper vans that are down there, all the Germans and the French that are trying to sleep, and he was right next to them. I bet they'll have Yeah, a that's one of the say. things about the, this <laughs> marina. It's really good. They allow camper vans. To, yeah. It's a camper van park. They've got all the facilities for emptying the toilets and freshening the water up and everything. Mm. And uh, it's very popular with people because they don't let caravans in, only camper vans, because loads of posh people these days retire and buy a camper van or rent a camper van and they go off and so this is one a popular destination for people mm. to stop and then visit Gibraltar but you don't want to put up with that you can't have that <laughs> I've never known it before I'd want my money back but honestly Graham, if I stayed here be fair we've been in this marina now 10 years and I've never ever ever it's that known place that. over the road they've been partying so oh, I can't four blame the marina for that today. that's different yeah and they've got their floodlights on so I think they're gonna do something tonight I can see already it's a private gun club and uh, well I don't know um, they there have... doesn't seem to be any law does there on um, noise abatement and disturbing the peace and so if it was in the UK you'd just call the police and they'd go round and have a word a lot of people have raised that subject in the comments and the problem here in Andalusia is it's a, it's seen as a God-given right, certain festivals, fiestas, end of summer, um, like uh, Dia de la Muerta, stuff like that. It's it's not like that, you just can't complain and besides I always sort of feel we're guests in the country. Last yeah, yeah. night of summer they play loud music in that club until 7 in the morning but I don't mind that. If, oh, his, if his voice had been music, he was drowning the music out. It was the uno, dos, trace, wah, wah, wah. That, that was the bit that I couldn't stand. I wouldn't have minded if it had been a bit of music. That would have been all right. At least it's something I can relate to. 
I didn't realise how much he'd been getting under my skin psychologically throughout the day and the day before that and the night before that. <laughs> it's always the same the last weekend, isn't it, in, in August? I would laugh if he's tied you know, wasn't, to wasn't a lamppost having a wenchie uh, at the moment. Didn't Diana die in the last weekend? In August. Thirty, uh, yeah, thirty first of. Because uh, it was the air show, wasn't it? We were at the air um, show. You were, I wasn't. I was at home. Oh. And. Um, did yeah. you go to the air show? That year? Yeah, I did. I did, but I didn't stay there. I went, we were camping, weren't we? That particular air show, but I'd done camping, and a fox came in the tent and that's right, that's stole right. my Bacardi and Coke, and I, I had condensation all over my nose, and I just said I've had enough. I think it was the next night or something, Thomas had pissed me off and I used to fall asleep on the sofa regularly and I was one of those people I'd leave the telly on and they'd go, don't leave the telly on, it'll blow up overnight and I'd think, no it won't. I left the telly on and, and BBC News 24 had been bragging saying, we're going to start 24 hour news and um, I woke up and I thought it was a joke. I thought it's one of these parodies, it's a sick joke, and um, as I woke up bleary-eyed about four in the morning, I realised they were deadly serious. Yeah. I was going to ring my mum, but then I thought, well, it's four o'clock in the morning, I can't ring my mum. That's how big it was. Yeah, well, staying camping overnight on the airfield meant you didn't have to pay to get in again on Sunday. Because I had a flying club, I had free oh, passes. Oh, is that why you were doing it? I had no I had free passes anyway. Oh, that's right. You had a mate who faked tickets. I went in on one of those tickets. No, I didn't. No, Denny. He printed oh, right. fake tickets off. I got in on one of them. I remember now. I've just remembered that. I think well, I must have had the camper van. I can't remember, but I was definitely stayed at Debbie's yeah, you house did that have, night. Yeah, you did have the camper van. I stayed at Debbie's that night because Richard was down for the holidays. Why didn't it he was, stay in the camper van? He told me in the morning that she died. He came upstairs because I, I was that was my ex-girlfriend, by the way. I was with at the time. And, was that uh, when you liberated his rat behind his back? Mm, be around that time, uh, maybe. Poor little Richard. He said to me, "I wasn't with Graham at the time." He said, "I've got a pet rat," and I said, "Oh, show me." He had it in the camper van. And he said, don't let my dad do anything to it. I love this rat. I want to see it when I get back. And I went, oh, yeah, I'll make sure. And as soon as Richard went, Graham went, oh, I'm letting that go in the field. It's a rat. I'd be ha absolutely happy. And I went, oh, my God, what should I tell Richard? <laughs> I'm sure it would have been fine. It was just a rat. He said it would be a happy rat. It's a female rat. It'll go and find other you rats. You said he it? won't remember. And I don't think he did. I don't think he ever asked. He stayed with me for the holidays, he wanted a rat, so we got him a rat in a cage, okay, it was in there. And when he went back to his mother, back up north, I just let, let it go. Like, what do you do with a rat? <laughs> I don't want a rat. Oh, the cat just wants it, a rat. Just let it go. Look maybe it'll looking. survive, maybe it won't, I don't know. You know. Give she's, it, she's pursing her lips again. Give it a chance. Look, she's blowing you kisses. No. She's clawing my willy again. <laughs> clawing your balls and now she's... I'm letting you up on my knee. Oh, I know what she wants. She wants treats. Oh, is it that? Anyway. Right. That's enough of that. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that's probably a good time to end it because it's all turned to liquid and we're all going to set fire to ourselves if we're not careful. Mm. Do you want to blow it out and make a wish? Good night. And may your God go with you.